Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and members of the press, my name is Roland Roberts II, and today, January 20th, 2023, I do hereby announce my Republican candidacy for President of the United States. This is not something I have aspired to, nor has it been a dream or goal. In fact, it was something I thought I would never do because of the nastiness of American politics and for the sake of my dear wife, Rebecca Lee Roberts, who is pregnant with our first son, Roland III. I grew up here in the mountains of West Virginia, the son of a father who is a pastor, educator, and state senator, and a mother who teaches high school English. Living on a farm has taught me that when you wrestle with pigs, you both get dirty. And I prefer a simple, quiet, God-fearing life with my family and helping meet the needs of most underserved communities on earth. But God had a different plan for me. I did not come from money. I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I had to go to a regular college, not a fancy one. And I had to pay my own way through school and work. I know what it's like to run into Walmart pump your own gas, clean your own home, get your own groceries. I know what it's like to not have enough money to pay your rent or utility bills because you get a flat tire or because your car breaks down. I have lived the pain that many Americans feel on a daily basis, and it is exhausting. And my administration will make life better for every American that helps themselves. God has prospered these United States for 247 years because he promised that righteousness exalts a nation. And blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Despite our many problems, differences, and personal shortcomings, God governs in the affairs of mankind. I am running for president, not to take us backward to the way things used to be, and not to reset humanity to some ideology, but to, through principle and disciplined leadership, sound wisdom, grounded in truth, and with respect for all people, lead America in solving the great issues of our day in a way that lays the foundation for our leadership and excellence in the 22nd century. For America to lead the 22nd century, we must begin laying the foundation now. We must look forward. We must look past our own self-interest and build a future we can be proud to hand to our posterity. America is the greatest nation on earth. I have visited many other countries and spent a great deal of time in Africa. And I can tell you, there is no place on earth like the United States of America but she is hemorrhaging. We are rapidly deteriorating as a society. The fabric, backbone, and strength of our nation, the family, is disintegrating. The dollar continues its decline. The economy is unstable and under attack. The battles rage over who owns our children, who is allowed to control their mind and shape their thoughts and with what ideology. Our water quality is subpar and our electric grids are highly vulnerable to attack and collapse. Our airports are simply embarrassing. Our bridges, roads, and highways are falling apart and require endless construction. We experience blackouts and boil water advisories on a regular basis. Our citizens in California cannot even run a dishwasher in the washing machine at the same time. We lose over and over to China on key policy, foreign policy issues in key regions of the world that are vital to our nation's national security. I have sat in our embassies abroad and seen the failed policies firsthand. South Korea has better infrastructure than us. Singapore has better infrastructure. Qatar has better infrastructure. Dubai has better infrastructure. And the list goes on 
and America, we keep funding other nations while our own infrastructure falls apart. It is time for America to invest in America. It is time for America to invest in her youth. It is time for America to take care of her senior citizens. It is time for America to rebuild herself into a mightier nation than the world has ever known, economically, educationally, and militarily. But not a single one of these challenges will be resolved with the current rut of vile political discourse. We can't achieve a unity about humanity without agreeing on everything. We can live independent, prosperous lives with each having varied opinions, perspectives, lifestyles, and cultures. But we will fail and do a great disservice to the generations that follow if we, the citizens of the United States, continue to allow ourselves to be divided nationally based on skin color, who we have sex with, or figuring out if we are a boy or girl. I assure you that any national government focused and obsessed with these and like issues are not for we the people, as seen by their dereliction of duty and abdication of their responsibilities laid out in the second greatest document on earth, the Constitution of the United States. Until this moment, we have played into the hands of America's enemies. China and Russia's propaganda, psychological, operational warfare in the United States has been extremely effective at controlling the national political narrative and social issues, thus dividing America from within. That ends with my presidency. States have the right to regulate who gets married to who, who gets a driver's license and when, and under what circumstances an unborn child does not see the light of day. Speaking about my administration, while states are handling state matters, they're given mandate to address, my administration will be focused on making Americans more prosperous, giving a living wage retirement to seniors and dramatically increasing incomes for America's most productive workers in our free enterprise system. Keeping every American safe by preparing us for the battlefields of the future and improving America's health by giving new direction to the FDA, NIH, NSF, and CDC to focus on cures, not band-aids, and prevention, not mere treatment. We have a food crisis in America that is greatly contributing to our health care crisis. And these will be addressed throughout my administration to increase the life expectancy and quality of life of every American to 100 years of age. The national conversation must change from its circular, regressive, demoralizing, hateful nature. And together, we will raise the bar of political discourse above our social and cultural differences. Beginning today, we talk about new scientific discoveries, new mathematical advancements, and medical breakthroughs for the deadliest diseases, cancers, and illnesses known to man. Beginning today, we talk about discovering new raw materials through space and oceanic research to live longer, build stronger homes, buildings, highways, and enhance communications. Beginning today, we talk about answers to keeping hurricanes from ever touching land of the United States again. We talk about soldering the fault lines and stabilizing the inner core of the earth to minimize damage from earthquakes. Beginning today, we talk about creating an educational model for the 22nd century, where our children lead the world in science, technology, mathematics, engineering, agriculture, and the trades. Beginning today, we talk about ushering in America 2.0, the age of American innovation. During my administration as 47th President of the United States, America will be celebrating her 250th birthday. America has stood for freedom, liberty, and justice for all. We are the melting pot of the world. Embedded and woven in the fabric of our nation, we are a country of law and order. 
values, character, and virtues, such as respect for our fellow man, personal property, and positional authority. It is during our 250th birthday celebration of the greatest nation and empire this earth has ever known or seen, that with your help and the help of Almighty God, with me as your president, we will usher in an America that will last another 250 years and beyond, building on the rich heritage and legacy of our forefathers. With me as your president, America's best days are before us, not behind us. I cannot fix decades of deep systematic problems in four years, but we can lay the foundation in eight. And I am not beholden to any lobbyist corporation or outside interest. I answer only to God and the American people. That is why I'm running. To offer a different political spirit with a vision for 22nd century America that starts with my eight-year plan, the age of American innovation, that will ensure our global leadership and physical safety for the next 250 years. It took our great founding fathers a belief and an insight but out of reach vision to form the more perfect union, these United States. And that is what my America 2.0 plan will do for our nation's future. It is a bold plan, and I commit to speaking about my vision for an America that pleases God, prospers mankind, and leads us authoritatively into the next century. May our great-grandchildren be speaking of us as the generation that saved America from herself. May we reject the political grandstanding and self-aggrandizement of self-seeking, power-hungry, egomaniacs that will do anything for attention. May we move past political stunts, gimmicks, sound bites, half-truths, and talking points, and be a nation of dignity, character, and honor. If you want to walk boldly into the future with America leading the way in a noble, dignified, honorable way, then I humbly ask for your support and vote to elect me as your next president of the United States. May we once more be one nation under God. May God bless each of you, and may God bless these United States of America.